into English. Subtitles will emerge as they speak. So, maybe you don't want to look like a refugee from Star Trek. In the future, these glasses will be sexy because Hollywood, movie stars, fashion models, they'll say, get with the program. Everyone has the Internet any time of the day. You'll watch movies, have GPS capabilities, scan for good. This is your home entertainment center. Now, you may say to yourself, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I don't wear glasses. I don't wear glasses. So how am I going to be able to meet people, see who they are, see what they're saying in Chinese if I don't wear glasses? No problem. If you don't wear glasses, maybe you wear contact lenses. This is the future of eyewear of the future. That is, you will blink and you will go online. Now, who will buy these things? First will be college students taking final examinations. You have trouble memorizing trigonometry? No problem. You just blink and all the sines and cosines come out. So college students will buy it first. Who will buy it second? Artists. Artists will be able to create things right in front of themselves with moving their hands, colors and shapes of unimaginable beauty even before you put anything on paper. This allows you to create things. Architects are next. You create a building, you want to move some rooms around, no problem. You simply walk into a building, and if you're a st fan of Star Trek, there's something called the holodeck. This will give you a holodeck. You walk into an empty room, and you'll see your building totally furbished all around you. Who else will buy this? Tourists will buy it. Let's say you're in Rome. Ever been to Rome and noticed that the ruins are really ruins? There's not much left of the Roman Empire? No problem. In the future, as you walk through the Forum, you will see the entire Roman Empire resurrected from the ruins. In fact, the Chinese have already done this for the Summer Palace. You can go to the Summer Palace, and they have animation that recreates the Summer Palace outside Beijing as you walk through the Summer Palace. It's not in your contact lens, but you will have it in your contact lens. And for the Discovery Channel, I had, to act, I had a chance to actually put on some of these things. They're in your glasses, they're eyepieces, contact lenses are coming out next. And so what does it mean? It means that you will live in something called augmented reality. Now, virtual reality, that's for children. Virtual reality is demons and warlocks and aliens in glasses, and you fire bullets at them. This is for adults. Adults will impose virtual reality on top of ordinary reality. So you will see inside objects. You'll see right through things. You will be able to have the power of a god, omniscience. Now, where have you seen this before? You've seen this before in the movies. Where have you seen it before? This is the governor of California <laughs> in a very bad mood. You don't want to get on the wrong side of this governor. This is the Terminator robot, and look how he sees the world in the upper left. Every time the robot sees a person, a biography emerges, a biography, translation of what they're saying, coordinates. This is augmented reality, that even as you walk through something that you're unfamiliar with, objects are identified, people are identified, or you can just shut it off if you don't want to have everything identified. And you can create things by moving your hands. This is like living in the holodeck. Or you probably saw the movie The Matrix. This is very close to The Matrix because you can recreate reality just by putting in a motion picture into your contact lens. So this is called augmented reality coming very soon. You can see people's biography as they speak. You can see right through objects. Resurrect tourist attractions. Be an architect. Be an artist. So let's not talk about your, your where and how will you work, live in the future. This is now the near future. We'll talk about the far future in a minute. Uh, this is your um, wristwatch of the future. Your wristwatch of the future will have full Internet capability because it only cost a penny, one penny for a chip. This is your cell phone of the future. And this is your cell phone with a flexible screen. Let's say that you want to type a message on your cell phone. Ever try to do that? It is the biggest pain in the butt I've ever had to do. Type email on a little cell phone, right? Your fingers are too big. No problem. 
In the future, you'll simply unscroll, unscroll an entire screen from your cell phone. Paper will become intelligent because chips cost a penny. That's for free. This is the future of wallpaper. Wallpaper today, you hang it up right. What a pain hanging up wallpaper. And it just sits there and does nothing. I mean, what a waste of money, right? You pay all that money for wallpaper, it just sits there and does nothing. Well, hey, intelligent wallpaper on the, on the right-hand side. Flexible paper. So when you walk into a room and you want to redecorate, you say to yourself, oh, my God, i got to pay a painter. i got to get an artist. No problem. You simply talk to the wall. And you say, change color, okay? I don't like this design. I want a floral design. And boom, that's intelligent wallpaper. And on the left, there's your wallet of the future. Today, your wallet has pictures of your family, but they sit there like a dumb bunny and don't do anything, right? No problem. In the future, your pictures of your family will move. In fact, all pictures will move. Because, hey, chips cost a penny. It costs nothing to make the Internet everywhere. That's the future of paper, future of wallpaper. That's the future of your wallet. And this is your living room of the future. This is how you will communicate. This screen is a wall screen. It goes 360 degrees. 360 degrees. It's called the cave. I had a chance to get into this cave for the, for the Discovery Channel. They put me in this cave. Everywhere I moved, everything moved with me. And I saw everything in three dimensions. This is also the future of your love life. Let's say it's Friday night. You're a college student and you have no date. What do you do? We all know what you do. You get stone drunk. <laughs> In the future, you will go up to the wall and say, mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's available tonight? <laughs> the wall screen knows exactly who you like, scans for all the other wall screens, Puts them out there, and you can have a nice date Friday night. Why be lonely on a college campus on Friday night? You'll go to a nice three-dimensional movie, come back, and then you'll go back to your wall and say, mirror, mirror on the wall. I want to see a movie with my date, Casablanca, except remove Humphrey Bogart's face and put my face instead. <laughs> remove Ingrid Bergman's face and put my date's face instead. Isn't the future wonderful? Okay. <laughs> So chips are going to be freed of where they come from. We're going to be actually changing the English language as a consequence, a contradiction in terms. When chips are put into toys, we'll have a contradiction in terms called smart Barbie dolls. Another contradiction in terms is Microsoft works. <laughs> that is also a contradiction in terms. On the lower left, you see that cyber dog. That cyber dog can babysit your kids. That dog can run, bark, play with your children. That dog does everything except pee on your carpet. Okay? And some people say the future is cold. The future is it's all mechanical, robots everywhere. I mean, who wants to live in a future like that? Well, look, if you're old and your friends have passed away, your kids don't call you on the telephone anymore, you're all alone. This will be your lifeline. You will, as a lonely individual, go to the wall screen and say, mirror, mirror on the wall. Set up a bridge game. Somebody from Russia, somebody from Antarctica, somebody from South Africa, and you'll have friends around the world. If your kids don't visit you for Christmas, no problem. You'll simply materialize them around your room. Your whole family will be right there, either in your contact lens or in your room. So again... The, the Internet is misunderstood. Some people think the Internet is, quote, male. It's male-dominated. It's hierarchical. Originally, it was. Let's be frank about it. The Internet was created to win a nuclear war. I mean, the Pentagon ain't stupid. They're not going to fund an Internet just so people could have fun with dogs and, and cats and things. No, the Internet was a warfighting device. But today, I'm proud to announce that 51% of the Internet is female. 51% of the people on the Internet are women. And what do they use it for? To touch other people, to make contact, to bust open from the loneliness they might feel. So in other words, the Internet is about touching people. That's its true mission. And that's what it will do with wall screens. And what about television? What about your win window of the future? 
This is the future of Windows. Today, a window just sits there, dumb, doesn't do anything. I mean, what a waste of money. You pay all this money for glass, and it doesn't do anything. In the future, glass will be intelligent. If you're tired of looking at that same window, you just talk to it and say, give me the Mona Lisa. Give me the Eiffel Tower. Give me the streets of Rome. There it is, intelligent glass. We can even make glass intelligent. And TVs, three-dimensional TVs that jump out. Yeah, without glass. You know those clunky glasses you used to wear with red and green? You look like a real nerd wearing one of those things, right? In the future, you simply look at a screen. Now, here's how it works. That screen has thousands of vertical lines, vertical lines. Each vertical line is a prism. The prism takes an image and splits it in half and sends one to the left eye, one to the right eye. So wherever you move your head, you see it in three dimensions. This is coming. In fact, for toys, we already have games that have this technology. And this is your office of the future. <clears throat> How will you work in the future? Well, today, you have a PC that dominates your office. But why? That PC doesn't do anything. It just records your software. That's all it does. So why not make disposable paper? Disposable computers. These are disposable computers. They only cost a penny. And as you move from room to room, the files follow you. The computer is nothing. The software is everything. So when you go from room to room, your files automatically follow you in the cloud. And computers, what do you do with the computer afterwards? You throw it away. It only costs a penny. This is your cubicle of the future. This is the car of the future. Ever try to drive a car with no hands? You might wind up in, the, in jail if you try to do that. That's what this car does. It has GPS. It links up to satellites in the sky, which we physicists invented. And we physicists now hook up a car to GPS, and the car drives itself. I had a chance to drive this car. The uh, Discovery Channel put me in this car, and so there I was driving the car. And then the cameraman said, let go. And I said, what? He said, let go. So I let go, and there I was driving my car like this. Try sometime. Try driving a car like this. This means that in the future, you'll simply talk to your car and say, take me to wherever, and you have a chauffeur. This even spots accidents. It has radar in the, in the fenders. It actually is better than a human, better than a human in terms of avoiding collisions on the highway. Now, that was the near future. That was the next 20 to 30 years. Now let's talk about beyond that. Because my book, uh, I only have a fraction of the book to, be, to talk about, goes much farther to the year 2100. Late in this century, we'll simply talk to computers by thinking. This is called telepathy. It is called telekinesis. It's usually associated with the gods. We will have this power. How does it work? Well, it's actually quite simple. You can even buy a toy today on the upper left. That guy wears a helmet. It picks up the radio emitted from your brain. Your brain emits radio, believe it or not. But that's all. It just radiates and dissipates. Computers can recognize it and convert it to mechanical motion. This already exists, and it is the beginning of telepathy. In fact, we can take somebody who is totally paralyzed, totally paralyzed by a stroke, put a chip in that person's brain, put that chip into a computer, and have the person who's totally paralyzed manipulate things around him. Here's how it works. The guy in the lower left had a stroke. Very unfortunate, a massive stroke totally parallel. He's a, he's a vegetable, basically. But other parts of the brain function. He just can't move his arms or legs or anything. Scientists in, in Brown University put a chip in his brain, hooked it up to a computer, and he can now do crossword puzzles. He can now surf the web. He can now answer emails from his parents and write emails, and he is a vegetable. He does everything with the power of his mind. In Japan, they took that one step farther. You know Bruce Willis in the movie Surrogates?